Awesome. So I guess it's funny, even though it's technically your team call, I will introduce you since you did that for me last time. Um, so guys, it's so awesome to have you all here tonight. Um, I'm actually really, really excited about this, especially kind of off the heels of Summit with just like the fire that everyone has had for building their business and sharing this opportunity with people. So tonight we are very, very, very lucky to have Corey Mayo here sharing with us on recruiting. And Corey is a, let me see if I remember this, uh, SC5 All-Star Legend, a one-star diamond, and a team leader on the leadership ladder. And if you're not sure what the leadership ladder is, I definitely suggest checking that out because it's something kind of the wave of the future for the way that um, recognition is going. So definitely check that out. Basically what that means is that she is rocking your business and building a team of rock star coaches. So that is what you need to know about that. So Corey, we are so excited to hear what you have to say. I've got my pen and paper ready as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so girl, the floor is all yours. I'll mute myself and you can just dive right in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jess. So I'm super excited to do this again with you guys. It's really cool for um, Jess and I to kind of pair up and get our teams together and kind of collaborate and share some ideas and, and just hear from different points of view. Um, Summit was amazing. Um, if you weren't there this year, I hope that you already have your ticket for next year because it's an amazing experience. And um, I'm just really excited to start some new things. I'm going to mute somebody really quick here. I'm sorry. I'm kind of distracted for a second. If you guys aren't muted already, if you could um, please mute yourself. It just makes it a little easier so I don't have to scroll through um, to mute anybody. Okay, perfect. I think everybody's muted now. Okay, so um, as Jess was saying, I am a one star diamond. I have been a coach for uh, a little over four years, almost four and a half years. However, I did not work my business for the first 18 months to two years. Um, I just kind of was flailing my way through, if you will. I couldn't find a rhythm. Um, Kelly is my upline sponsor as well, and she was very new to the business. She had been a coach for about a year, but was just starting to work the business herself. So we didn't have all the systems in place that we do now. And I got pregnant shortly after signing up. So, you know, just life was a whirlwind and I didn't start working the business right away. I'm sure, you know, there might be some of you on the call that kind of appreciate that. You, it's hard to find that rhythm. Um, but I can tell you this, if you keep showing up every single day and just focusing on the basics, it will come so easily and things will start to fall into place. And you're like, wow, like this is super easy. You just have to show up every single day. So I started doing that. Um, and it's been actually 31 months exactly. I can tell you because that's how many months I've been in success club that I have been consistent and it shows my business has grown because I'm showing up every day and I'm doing the vital behaviors. I'm making sure that I'm being a product of the product. I'm making new connections with people and I'm inviting people to not only challenge groups, but also to join this journey with me. Um, Kelly used to say, and it's something that's always kind of stuck with me is if my friend were doing this and having these amazing people around them all the time and earning an extra income, whether it's just paying for a credit card or it's putting an extra tank of gas in your car or it's putting a savings for your children, or maybe it's bigger and you build a business and they're paying for their house that they're living in. No matter what it is, if, if somebody were to be a part of this opportunity and not share that with me, I would be pissed off. I'd be like, why are you not sharing this with me? Because it's an amazing opportunity. People might not see that right away, but this opportunity in the, just the community, you guys, like making friends with Jess and Brooke and April and Sarah, like I have made some amazing friends through this journey and that alone is worth every penny, right? So that's a little bit about me. Um, I do want to talk with you about recruiting or what I like to more say is um, sharing the coaching opportunity and inviting friends to be a part of your family. When we invite people into our team and we give them um, a recognition or a shout out post to welcome them, we welcome them to our family. And that's how we word it in our team because that's what it is, you guys. Like, these are some of the, my best friends that I've ever had and um, that, I've, that I spend a lot of time with and I want to spend a lot of time with. So that's what you want to think about when you're 
building your team. So just by a show of hands, um, how many are um, intimidated by um, sharing the coaching opportunity or asking the question, or maybe you have been in the past? Does anybody feel okay? And even myself sometimes, especially if it's somebody that I really like and I think that they are an awesome rock star, it's kind of that like, oh, but what if she says, no, I don't want to like mess up our friendship, right? So you kind of, you have those moments of doubt. So we can all relate that we have that struggle of sharing this opportunity. But what we have to remember is this is an amazing opportunity. You all are here for a reason. There's something that's being fulfilled in your life that's making you a better person, that's making you a happier person, and that's making you healthier. So all positive things that want you to drive forward. So why wouldn't you want to share that with people, right? That's just spreading and paying it forward, first and foremost, you know, sharing that inspiration with people on another level besides just through a challenge group. So, um, and through that, you're going to grow your business, which is also going to grow your income. So for tonight's call, we are going to put aside our fears. We are going to stop worrying about if they're going to say no, because guess what? The answer will always be no if we never ask. So we're going to put that fear aside and we're just going to focus on what the positives are and what everybody can gain by sharing this opportunity. So I would like to share with you six ways that I personally share the coaching opportunity and I encourage my girls um, to share the coaching opportunity. Okay. So number one is especially when you're first starting out as a newbie um, and you're pushing for Emerald or even Diamond is creating a list of rock stars in your life, okay? Looking at your list, your Facebook contacts, your best friends, sit down, like put some time into this and sit down when it's quiet and think of rock stars in your life. I can remember Jess saying on the last call and um, I believe it was on the last call and on another call that I've heard her say in the past, that when she first started this business, she was like reaching out to all the people who she knew lived at home or were, didn't have a job or just were laying on the couch or, you know, whatever, like they need this opportunity, right? Because they need something to do in life. Wrong. You don't want to have to pull people along you guys. So you want to look at the people who are go-getters and who are rock stars and who are inspiring people and who are looking to pay it forward. Those are the people you want on your team because those are the people that are going to go out there and be successful and help inspire a lot of lives. So look for the people in your life who are go, excuse me, go-getters and rock stars. Um, number two, we all are adding and growing our list, right? We should be. If you're not, I, I will admit it, I was super guilty of this for the longest time of not adding to my list and it bit me in the butt and things stalled out. Um, so you should be adding to your list every single day um, and reaching out and making new contacts. So what I have started doing um, in that process is putting a star. When I write their name down, and it, let's say um, a couple posts that I see, they're really inspirational. Or when I first reach out to them and make connection, we just kind of have a good vibe. I will put a star next to those people in my contact list so that when I'm looking to invite people to another way that I invite down the road here that I'll share with you, I can look very quickly through my list and they already have some sort of an identification that tells me, look, I need to talk with this girl about it because for whatever reason, some, for some reason she stood out to me. So that's something that will help along the way too, to grow that list of um, rock stars and go-getters as your list is growing. Okay. Um, the third way is, um, Creating Facebook events. This is huge, you guys. And I do it through my like page because um, it not only shows up on my like page, but I can boost it and I also get more interaction. Um, and when people interact on Facebook events, when they're public events, it pops up in their friends and your friends' news feed. So you get more interaction, okay? So that is something that we do, our team as a whole does at least once a month. We are doing a live what is coaching call. I create an event, um, usually three to four days before our event is going to happen. Ours happens to be the second Tuesday of every single month. That's just a, a non-negotiable that I hold that for our team. 
So start doing them. I know it's scary. Um, if you haven't done a call like this, it's a little intimidating at first, but it's really fun. It's like you get this big high after doing it. And the more you practice, the better you get. I'm not perfect. There's times that I'm presenting the coaching opportunity and I use the slideshow presentation, you guys, and I still stumble over my words sometimes, but that makes me relatable. I'm a real person. I'm not a robot and I'm not just here. Um, are those as impactful as personal pages if you don't like, if you don't have a like page? Um, I'll answer that in just a second. So um, creating an event so that you can drum up some buzz about it and then hosting the live event. And if it intimidates you, ask your success partner or ask a teammate to do it with you. Or I'm sure your upline would be more than happy to help you do the first one so that you can get yourself going, okay? There's a couple other things that I have done in the past, uh, sneak peeks. Um, which are, for me, they're not as successful. I started out with a five day sneak peek, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a private Facebook group that each day you're sharing a couple things about the coaching opportunity. Maybe some of your downline coaches stories, what we do as coaches, who we are, you're sharing videos and things like that. If you go to my YouTube, you can check out my videos that I have for that. If you would like, I went from a five day to a three day. Here's the thing, um, and the other coaches that I have talked with, it works maybe for one or two groups, and then it kind of fizzles out. The problem with that route, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it because I think everybody should try and see what fits for them. I think the problem with that is people don't understand the real opportunity at hand and to ask them to plug into a group for five days straight or even three days straight. People want information right now, right? Like you're scrolling your phone and you want things right now. Three days and five days is too long to get to the meat of what they're wanting, okay? So that's an option. And then another one is a backstage pass. So um, I don't know if you've seen these before, but basically a backstage pass is a live Facebook event that you create and you are going to host a backstage pass for an hour. So let's say on Tuesday evening from 8.30 to 9.30, you're going to host a live hour where you're sharing either pre-recorded videos or you're going Facebook Live. I personally, if you know your content, I would go Facebook Live because you are gonna draw so many more people in with that being an option now. Um, sharing your coaches' stories, maybe having a couple of your coaches or your success partner join you in sharing their story so you're getting a couple different perspectives. Um, but basically you're doing the same thing that you would do on a webinar sharing about the coaching opportunity or even um, through a sneak peek, but you're doing it condensed in one hour on a Facebook event, okay? So um, I will go back to that question really quick. So you asked about our personal, so are like pages as impactful as personal pages? Like pages, I think that everybody should have, um, but if you're a new coach, I don't recommend it right away. And it's because it can be very overwhelming. Facebook like pages take a lot of hard work, you guys. It takes a lot to grow your following, your interaction. Like I have been extremely consistent all year, posting at least twice a day, scheduling posts and having content created for it. And I'm just now starting to get some engagement. If I boost it, yes, I get stuff. But you have to be ready to commit to being very consistent to getting your following going. Um, so what I would, what I tell my girls, get your personal page, get comfortable with that. Make sure you have a good schedule there and you're posting consistently there first. You can still do a public event through your personal page if you don't have a like page. Um, so that's where I would start. Once you're feeling more comfortable, then add the like page, but try not to overwhelm yourself. Stick to the basics. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay, perfect. Um, and then is that in a group or an event page? How would you do that one? Which for the backstage pass, Jess? Yes. Okay. So for the backstage pass, I personally have not done it, but I know that Meg has great success with it. We've, our team personally, we started doing the live webinars because I think people like having, seeing somebody talking. Um, and we've even done a Facebook event and I've gone live in that. But as far as the backstage pass, they are doing that as an event, not a group. And so the benefit that you have to doing an event over a group is 
through that hour, every time that you post, that's getting into your friends' news feeds as well as their friends' news feeds. And they'll say, oh, so-and-so joined this event. I want to check it out and see what they're talking about. So it gives you more exposure than if you were in a closed group, even if it was a public group, people aren't going to see things popping up unless they actually request to be in your group. Okay. So those are some options there. Um, the next one, which is number four is posting, um, sprinkling what we call sprinkling posts on social media. So not like, presenting the coaching opportunity through a hook post where you're like inviting people to join you, but maybe um, just a very subtle post about what coaching has done for you. Like maybe you have a rock star success partner and she uplifted you that day and you just want to give her a shout out and a thanks that the community of people that are surrounding you are uplifting you and empowering you. Or maybe you were able to pay off a credit card and you want to shout that out to the world or Maybe like me, I love sending out gifts to my girls. And when I go to the mailbox or when I go to the post office, I'm taking a selfie with all of my gifts to send to my girls because that is one of my favorite things in the world to do. And I'm like, this is my real job. I get to go to the post office and mail presents to surprise people. So things like that to just sprinkle in. You're not actually saying, hey, I'm looking for, you know, five girls who are looking to, you know, who are sick and tired of their day-to-day -day job or, you know, are looking to feel fulfilled, things like that. And then when people like and comment on that post, I'm reaching out to every single one of those people individually. And if it's somebody who's already on my starred rock star list, I'm going to start the conversation more than just general convo. So if I'm just connecting with somebody because they like my post, I'll just be like, hey girl, like how are things going? I saw that you like my post and I just thought I would reach out and say hi and see how things are with you lately. If it's somebody who I think is a rock star and who I want to welcome onto my team, then I'm going to say something like, hey girl, like what's going on? Um, I hope that you're having a great Wednesday so far. You know, we've been super busy. I'll tell them a little bit about me too. So it's not just, um, you know, like you're trying to count on them basically just a little bit of back and forth. And then I'll say, Hey girl, like I noticed that you liked my post about the coaching opportunity the other day or about that. I was able to do this the other day. I was just curious to know, is this something that you were just liking because you thought that that was cool? Or is this something that you have considered doing yourself? And I'll ask that way. So making sure like utilize that people are engaging with you. Okay. And then the next um, way, number five, is much like what we just talked about, but it's more of a hook post. So when you're actually making a post, inviting people or sharing that you are looking for rock stars who want to feel more fulfilled, who are sick of living paycheck to paycheck, and who are wanting more out of life, and making sure that you are connecting with those people one-on-one -on -one as well. Okay? Are we good so far? Okay. So... My last way that I um, make my list or the people that I'm going to reach out to are my challengers. And this is my um, boom shakalaka. This is what I do all the time. Like this is my go-to. It, it, it really is. I make sure that my challengers have a kick-ass challenge group. And when they are rocking it, I am voice messaging them, telling, how, telling them how well they're doing, and I'm reaching out to them on a daily basis every other day, and I am empowering them, and then I am inviting them to do what they're already doing, what we do as coaches in the group. I don't know. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's muted. No, there's two of her. Um, okay, so I'm making sure that they have an amazing experience and that I'm empowering them and then I share the coaching opportunity with those people. And pretty consistently, you guys, I've been enrolling four coaches a month just on my challengers. And sometimes they're just discount to start, but don't discount the discount coach or a preferred customer is what I personally call them because Sometimes people just want to get their feet wet and learn a little bit more before they're ready to really jump full in. You know, I have a girl who's been a coach for a year as a preferred customer. And yesterday, literally yesterday, she messaged me. She's like, okay, so I'm ready to learn more. So 
you never know, you know, help them save a little bit of money and you know, they might be interested. I always welcome every single coach um, into our team page so they can see what we're doing. They can be involved in the community and um, they feel like they're a part of the family. So challengers is huge. Keep it very basic. You guys like you're inviting people to um, impact their health and their fitness, right? So keep it basic. Try not to overcomplicate complicate things and just keep it simple and make sure that they get results and they're having an awesome time and they love it. And the products work. Like we don't have to push that once they're having a, a great time and they love the community of people that they're with. It's a no brainer. You know, they get sucked in because it's such an empowering community. So those are the ways that I um, tend to uh, invite. Um, I would like to share with you how I actually invite like through message. Sorry, my husband's leaving. Um, so how I actually ask him. So I have three parts to my message that I sent to them initially, um, inviting them into the coaching opportunity. And then I'll explain what I do from there forward. Okay. So the first part of my conversation is always going back and looking at what they or our conversation was or what they have been up to lately on their Facebook page. And I will reach out to them and start general conversation. Hey girl, like how are things going? I saw the other day you blah, 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 whatever. Just, or um, last we were talking, you were going to go to Florida. How was that? Did you guys have a good time? General conversation and just reconnecting it and opening that friendship and making sure that they know that I care, that it's not just about, you know, asking them a question. Um, so reconnecting is the first part of my message. The second part is going to be edify them, to tell them, like, why do you want them on your team? Or do you find them inspiring? Do you love seeing their posts? Are they a kick-ass challenger in one of your groups? Why? You know, are they a really good friend and you want to share this opportunity? What makes them a go-getter? What makes them a person that you are putting on this list to invite? And tell them that. And then the third part is, have you ever considered? So once you edify them and you are pointing out the characteristics, I'm not saying like, I think you would be a great coach because blah, blah, blah. I, I'm saying, Hey girl, like I, I saw that lately you've been making these really awesome posts and I just find you incredibly inspiring. And I really enjoy and look forward to seeing your posts every day in my news feed. something like that to point out why they are an awesome person and then asking. So I just have to ask, have you ever considered doing what I do as a health and fitness coach? That's it. It's not super complicated. You know, it, it's, it's really pretty simple. Then they usually say, well, no, I haven't. Or yeah, but I just don't know or something like that. And you say, okay, awesome. Or that's perfectly fine girl. But I just had to ask because an X, Y, and Z again, why they were on your list to begin with, why you think they're rock stars. And then I say, if I were to share a short 25 minute video with you about the opportunity, would you watch it? So after my three part message, the next step of my process is using a third party tool. Do not be the messenger. Do not, unless you're doing a live video, you guys, because we tend to give too much information and vomit on people. It's just, it's just habit because you get excited, especially as a new coach. You're like, Oh my God, she's excited. Oh my God. She said, yes, she wants to learn more. Okay. Take a deep breath and just relax for a minute. She'll still be there in two seconds, I promise. And just kind of calm yourself and be confident and just say, okay, if I were to share a short 25 minute video with you, would you watch it? And they say, yes. Okay, perfect. Don't just send her the link. Then I set up a time to follow up. I really try very hard most of the time to get on the phone, set up a time. Okay, great girl. When, um, when would you have time to watch a 25 minute video and set up a short phone call with me to see if this is the right opportunity for you? If the phone conversation doesn't work or, you know, life gets busy or whatever, I will just say, okay, great. When do you think that you'll have the 25 minutes to sit down and check out this video? Um, and then I can follow up with you or I'll say, I scratch. I don't say that because I don't want to put the ball in their court. I'll say, look, the, the video is 25 minutes. Um, would it be okay if I check back with you? And I usually give them a day. 
like one full day. So it would be like, if I shared it with them tonight, I would say, would it be okay if I check back with you Friday morning? Will that give you enough time to watch the video? And typically they'll say yes. So then I make sure, don't forget the follow up. I make sure it's in my calendar to follow up with that person. And I don't say, so what did, so what'd you think? I always ask, what did you like about the video? What did you like? about the information that you watched or that you saw, because you want them to point out the positives. You don't want them to immediately go into, oh, well, I just don't know if I'll have time, or I'm not good with talking to people, or uh, you don't even want to go there. You want them to remember the good and what excited them about it. So asking them what they liked about the information. Um, something else that Janelle Summers um, does, and I have this, Jess, I can send it to you, um, just remind me if your girls would like it, um, is the bullet point list. So people are super busy nowadays, right? And when they don't really know what the opportunity is, they might not want to commit to a 25 minute video. Or if it's somebody, I know that we all have this, somebody that you're connecting with back and forth back, and it's just really hard to like nail them down, um, or you're always missing and crossing paths. She has um, a bullet point list that she sends to people um, that is a quick overview about coaching. I personally only used it once, but it is something that works. I mean, Janelle Summers is incredibly successful, you guys. So it's, you know, it, it's got to work because she's crazy successful. So that's another opportunity if somebody maybe, maybe they don't have Wi-Fi and they can't watch a video on YouTube for 25 minutes or, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons. So it's just another avenue that you can share with people um, to share the bullet points and not be the messenger. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So I just have a couple last minute, like things that I've learned. Um, and then we can open it up for questions if you girls have questions. Okay, cool. So um, some things that I've learned um, since starting this opportunity. One, if they're not ready, it's not you. It's not you. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I know that especially as a new coach because I was there, you want everybody on your team because you want to grow and you want to inspire people and you want to help people. But if they're not ready, you're gonna have to pull them along. And you don't want to do that. One, you don't wanna do that. And two, you don't want them to think that that's what you have to do in this business because it's not. You want people who are excited and who want to be involved and who want to learn and who want to grow and see potential in this, okay? So that's one thing that I've learned. Um, the second thing I've learned is be confident. The whole fake it till you make it, I think a lot of people, um, uh, I can't think of, um, interpret that differently to me, fake it till you make it is just exuding that confidence that you want to have, um, to, you know, envision yourself already, already being a diamond if you're not and how a diamond would present that opportunity or how a diamond would talk to a potential client. Or if you're a diamond, how a one star or two star or five star. Put yourself where you are going rather than where you are and exude that confidence. It will make a huge difference. Sit down before you have the call and tell yourself, this person is super excited to join my team and they are going to be a rock star. Empower yourself because then you're going to be uplifted. You're going to smile during the phone conversation um, and people like, it might sound stupid and I don't care if it does, but I literally smile as I'm typing messages to people because, uh, yes, because one, I love doing it and I'm excited about it, but I want them to feel that energy when I, I don't want to sit there. Oh, I got a message this person. She's going to say, no, she's not going to be interested. No, put those vibes out there that they're excited and they want to make changes and they find you inspiring and they want to follow you. You have to exude that. And when you start putting that out there, that is what you are going to get back. Okay. So, um, that's the second one. The, um, the third one is envision. So this kind of what I just said, envision rock stars becoming a part of your team. Envision that for yourself on a daily basis. See people who want to make their mark on the world and who want to do something bigger than mediocre. 
in that, when you start putting that out there and you start vibrating at a higher level, you guys, you are going to get that back. It's when you're concentrating on the people who are dragging you down that you are going to see yourself spinning your wheels. You really are because that's what you're putting out and that's what you're going to ba get back. So when you start focusing on the positivity and the confidence and, and rising yourself up, that's when big things will start to happen. So that's all I have. I hope, <laughs> I hope that all made sense and I didn't ramble too much. That was amazing. You did not ramble at, at all. <laughs> um, I love what you said about how you put a smile on your face like when you're talking to someone because I do that all the time. And a lot of times I don't even do it on purpose. But that's just how, woo, Steve, looking good in the background there. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of times I don't even do it on purpose. It's just that like... I started to attract my tribe. And when I'm talking to my tribe, I am genuinely excited. Like Adam will always come into the office and be like, what you doing? Like you have this big smile on your face. And I'm just like, I'm working. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm just as happy about it. Yeah. Um, it's seriously the best feeling in the world. Like I'll just be sitting there typing and I'm like, I am smiling ear to ear right now because it's just, it's fun. Absolutely. It really is. Um, Honestly, for me, one of the biggest things that I took away from that is just a reminder that, that I need to start sending messages to people who engage on my posts. Like if they're liking or commenting, I'm always just kind of like, oh, like so-and-so liked it. Cool. Yeah. They never do anything about it. But like you said, they're the ones who are already obviously showing some little bit of interest. They're engaging with us already in some way. Mm -hmm. so like they're basically like begging us to write them. Yeah. You know, so for me, that was the thing that I took really, I like, I took a lot of notes. And for me, that's one of the things that I'm going to start doing after this call. Because I mean, there are people that are just, you know, they're already, they're a little bit more ready maybe than other people. So yeah, no, that was amazing. Boy. Thank you. I see there are a few questions that there's. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Um, you're absolutely welcome. Um, quick question. I find my personal page gets more traction when my like page then my like page. Um, yeah, so it, it probably will. Um, okay. So I don't know if you were on when I was talking about a little bit ago, but, um, in the beginning, but my like page, like I've seriously been super consistent. I boost, um, and something I've learned, uh, from Anita Myron is when you're boosting like free groups or like something of value, um, for people to boost that to like, what your target market would be. And when you're boosting a post that is um, like a hook post where you're inviting into a challenge group or you're inviting into uh, the coaching opportunity, only boost that to the people who like your page and their friends and you will have more success uh, with your boost. Um, but like pages, like I said, they take a lot of consistency and time and getting people to engage with you. For example, I used to get like, I was getting really down, like after six weeks of being consistent and I'm like, what, like, what am I doing wrong? I'm still maybe getting one person. I still have posted, I get nothing. Like, what am I doing wrong? And all I can say is you just have to keep going. Um, and you have to keep showing up because it will start to compound. Um, Meg Wazinski has like 14,000 followers or something crazy on her Facebook page. Last time I checked it and she gets like what we would get engagement on our personal page with like a thousand friends. So just think about that. That's really, you know, like 40 to 50 likes or engagement, whether it's a mix of likes and comments really isn't that much when, when you think about 14,000 people are following you. So it's a, it's a small percentage, but it is very much worth it. And, um, Gary Vandertruck even talked about it at summit. Like it is worth being there and, um, Facebook pages are not going away that that is where you need to be. So, um, I would just say, keep providing content, maybe evaluate what you're sharing with people and what your schedule is and what times of day are working better and what content is working better? What are your followers really enjoying? What do they, um, what are they liking? Where, you know, where are you getting the most engagement and really start honing in and refining that as well. Does that help? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Those are great tips. Um, 
Do you do most of your posts on just your like page? Uh, do you do share them on your personal page or do you totally separate set of posts? Okay, so Gina asked if I do um, this separate posts on my personal and my like page and then um, do I share them? So I was starting to share some of my stuff on my page by like sharing it to get more organic reach. But what I have started doing actually is just making a live post and tagging myself in it every couple days. So it shows up on my personal page and I'm tagged in it, but I'm not sharing it to my page, to my, to my personal page. Okay. Um, and yes, for the most part, my content is separate. Um, my topics are very similar, but they're on different days. So, um, like for example, my challenge group posts, um, inviting like cook posts is Mondays on my personal page, but Mondays on my like page are like my story. So I just kind of, so that that way I'm almost hitting hook posts five to six days a week by sprinkling them and evening them out across the board between the two pages. Does that make sense? So I'm not, not throwing two hooks. Like if somebody likes my personal page and my, um, my like page, they're not getting a hook post, you know, bam, bam right away or on the same day, they're getting sprinkled out through the days. So you're constantly posting both. I do. Um, I know that Meg is super successful with her like page. Like I said, she has over 14,000 followers. Um, but she posts live on both pages all the time. I personally schedule out um, through my like page uh, at least one post a day, if not two posts. And then I try to make it a point to get one live post up of you know, maybe my post workout or something like that at a different time through the day. So I'm getting at least two to three posts on my like page every day. And it's not the quality you got or the, the quantity, it's the quality. Like you want to make sure it's good, valuable posts and not just, you know, just throwing, just putting something up just to get something up, especially on your like page. Does that make sense? Okay, let me see what, oh yeah, Meg's page. Um, do you follow a schedule for your posts like we talked about on Kelly's social? Um, I'm not sure what she is, uh, what Kelly is promoting now as far as uh, schedule, but yes, I absolutely follow a schedule. I have a schedule written out and I, like I said, I have, I've had a schedule for my personal page for a long time and when I created my schedule for my like page, I just kind of, intertwined it, like I said, so I'm throwing hook posts out, Does that, if that makes sense. Having a schedule does make a big difference, too. I, a, a little while ago, I scheduled, like, topics that I'll talk about daily, um, and I keep it right next to my desk, so I know, I know, like, whether I'm scheduling posts or whether I'm doing them, like, in the moment, I know what I'm going to be talking about, or, like, what kind of things. I know when I'm going to be doing invite posts. I know when I'm going to be talking about my mom life stuff. I know when I'm going to be you know, a question for engagement and that kind of thing. It makes it's, it's so important to have some type of schedule when you are, when you're doing posts. Yeah, for sure. And, and something that really helped me, I just know it now, but when I first started to give myself some consistency and structure, I scheduled my posts out and like what time of day I was posting. And then I made a, uh, an alarm and my alarm still goes off on my phone and I just uh, cancel it because I already know what I'm doing, but I'm, I scheduled it out on my calendar. So I get an alarm like five to 10 minutes before I should be making that post as a reminder. Hey, you need to post this topic or, you know, whatever. So that that way you have a reminder and you create that consistency. Um, somebody asked if I would share um, my schedule. Absolutely. So Every single morning without fail and it's scheduled through buffer. So it just rolls out is an inspirational quote, inspirational meme, some sort of, you know, wake up and be inspired um, first thing in the morning. And then um, my second post of the day is usually either my post workout or like what's happening right then. 
Um, and then my third post of the day is a flip flop. So if I do my workout in the afternoon, then it would be my post workout or what's happening in the evening, you know, like mid afternoon. And then, um, my nightly post, because typically for me and uh, usually for Facebook in general, you know, your best time to post your hook posts or like what you really want people to see are going to be in the evenings when people are just sitting down to relax. Usually if you're targeting moms, it's going to be after kids are in bed and she actually has a chance to sit down. Right. So, um, which is why we had to schedule this call a little later tonight. <laughs> um, so, um, Monday I do a challenge group invite. Uh, Tuesday, my hook post is, I actually do two. So they're not really hook posts, but like my for sure value posts are going to be a tasty Tuesday. So some sort of a recipe or maybe something we made or something I found. And then uh, transformation, I usually do a transform your life Tuesday. And so it could be myself, um, something that we have accomplished or um, a shout out to one of my challengers or one of my girls. Wednesday is always my story. So that's something I think is really important that we all forget to do is share who we are to be relatable. You think that your story gets redundant or like the same people are seeing it, but you guys, there's so many different twists to your story. And I promise you that not every single one of your friends has seen your story. So, um, and as you're adding to your list, what you're doing, it's important to share that and share pieces of who you are. Um, Thursday mid afternoon is always a Shakeology post. And then, um, in the evening is the business opportunity. Friday is some sort of family fun. So it's like usually in the evening, it's a family date night or something we're doing with our kids. Saturday, um, is usually like 9, 10 AM. And it's, um, like my Saturday, you know, it's my accountability post, how I did for the week, how I'm feeling that sort of thing. And then Sunday is usually some sort of inspiration or something that I'm going to strive to work towards for the week. And is that on your personal page or on your like page? That's my personal page. And how does it differ compared to your like page? Absolutely, Leslie. Um, so I don't have that schedule right in front of me. I'm I, because I scheduled that one out. I don't have the, I, I look at a thing, but um, it, so Monday is my story and usually, uh, the second post is a, uh, business opportunity post. Uh, Tuesday is, uh, as well, a transformation Tuesday, Wednesday is a wellness Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I don't remember if that's, I think I do, a, a um, a business app that day too, but I do it in the morning for whatever reason, my page does better in the morning than it does in the evenings. I don't know why that is, but, um, and I, I know a lot of other coaches have said that, um, my engagement is way better at like 1155, like just before lunch for whatever reason, usually between, between 10 AM and noon, I have really good engagement. Um, so, uh, Thursday is that Friday is like a fitness video or some sort of funny pick me up, you know, just something light and fun. And then Saturday is usually our fit club, um, because we do host a fit club here locally. And I share like who all showed up and tag them all in it. And that we had a great workout to start our weekend, keeping on track, blah, blah, blah. And then Sunday is usually a recipe. Um, and I, try to do those live. That doesn't always happen with life, but I do try to do a live Facebook video on a, a recipe that I'm making for meal prep for the week. What is a fit club? So a fit club is basically a live workout um, that's free. Uh, we host ours at a local church. We used to do uh, the Beachbody videos uh, for a really long time for like four or five years and we would just change it up because I have every single program. So we would just change up what, what program we were doing for that day and whatever, you know, flip a coin, what, what do we want to do? Um, or depending on the, uh, the people that showed up, you know, obviously we weren't going to do insanity max 30 if some 
older people showed up or people just starting their journey because we don't want to kill them the first time, right? Um, but some members of the church expressed that they would like to come, but they were intimidated by the videos. So we started doing a circuit training. So now we do a 12 round or 12 station circuit training where we do a workout for 60 seconds. You get a 30 second break and then you go to the next station and you just work your way through the station and we go through it twice. And we have a little timer on an iPad that goes off and it works out really well. And we've had a lot more people coming, but it's, it's basically just providing value for free and offering people to join the community and to work on being healthier and then building connections with people in your community as well. Um, oh, thank you, Chanel. She took off, but um, yeah. Anybody else have any questions? No? My great, really, really uh, um, everybody getting on and, and listening and it was really fun. I love doing this. We should do this more often, Jess, or at Absolutely. least do, do it again, you know, every so often and just, just touch base. Cause it's, I like seeing new faces. It's fun. It's fun to get new questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, this was, it was super fun. And it's, it's always nice too. Cause I mean, we could have the exact same knowledge and information, but it's like sometimes just hearing it presented in a different way. Like everything you said, I was like, oh yeah, I know that. And I was like, but do I do that? Like, no, not always. You know, it was a really good reminder. And I know we've got tons of new coaches here too, who for them, like this is maybe the first time they've heard it and super, super valuable information. Um, so I know you asked me at the end of our last call, you asked me, um, you asked me a couple questions. I can't remember all the ones that you asked me, but the one I really like, you asked what um, my favorite personal development book was. So I would love for you to answer that for us. Either something you're currently reading that you love or just one of your like oldie favorites. I'd love to hear. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so love, you are a badass. Uh, like I could seriously listen to that over and over. I just feel like my heart is on fire and I can just, accomplish shit when I listen to that. Um, I actually made a video for my girls after I completed it in like three days because I just listened to it nonstop. And then I made this video and put it in our group and I was like, whoa, because I just was so jacked up on energy and just felt amazing. Um, Girl Code. I recently listened to Girl Code and I really like that. It's Carla... Um, I don't have my phone over here. I have it on audibles, but it's girl code. Um, it, the success and sanity of an entre woman or entrepreneur or female entrepreneur. And I just started girl boss. Um, that's pretty good so far, but, um, girl code is similar to, um, to you are a badass, but on a different level and a more kind of even keel, you know, keep your head in the game type of a thing. And, um, one other one is, um, beach money by Jordan Alder. Right. That, I, I actually read that book and I don't read you guys. Like I listen to audio seriously all day long and I could not put that book down. It's not that long, but it just gives you a whole new vision. It was an incredible book. That book fires you up. What is it called? Uh, it's called, um, beach money. By Jordan Alder. I think um, maybe Gina and Leslie, I think I loaned that one to you guys. It's, oh yeah, that one. It's a really quick read, but it'll get you fired up about the idea of what this business can do for you in terms of like smart passive income. Like the whole premise is to be able to be laying on a beach on vacation and making money. And he walks you through, like, just inspires the heck out of you. So it's a good read for sure. Even if you're just, like, doubting yourself, if you're doubting, like, if you're struggling with this business or you just want to get inspired with this business, like, it's not beach body specific, but it, it's yeah. all about, like, how to make a smart passive income. And it will fire you up. <laughs> what I loved is that, like, this was, like, until – um, he had done, like, 13 or 15. I don't remember. 13 or 15 – um, MLMs and businesses and like literally had nothing you guys and he still kept trying and trying and trying and that was something that really resonated with me that like you just have to keep showing up 
and he has that passive income and can just lay on the beach and, and make tons of money because he put the time in and he kept showing up, but he created that vision for himself to create it. So mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed that book and it, the detail that he has, cause he walks you through his life was just really awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're making me want to read it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those books I think that you could totally read again and get re-inspired because for me badass is the exact same way I actually yeah. listen to badass I listen to at least a little bit a little bit of it every single day yeah um, on audible like even if it's just 60 seconds I listen to at least part of it every single day to just get me inspired and get me in the right mindset yes oh another one that while you're saying that is um uh, uh, miracle morning by Hal Hale Elrod that is yeah. incredible too because we all like to sleep. I love to sleep, especially while we're in refinishing our kitchen and I stayed up till 1 a.m. painting. Like I am exhausted, you guys. But it's amazing how he puts perspective on don't snooze on your life. Quit hitting the snooze button and snoozing on your life. So that's a really good book too. And actually um, a bunch of the people here on our team that are on this call right now, we started doing a morning call at like 6 a.m. Because like I read the book and I was like, dude, I need accountability because I, I always considered myself being not a morning person. And I was like, I need accountability if I'm gonna get my ass out of bed. I need to have a reason to show up. And for me, that needed to mean people knowing that I was supposed to show up. So for 30 days, and they're actually still doing it. I finished my 30 days and, and got into that habit. But we have a bunch of girls in the call and, and Luke, I guess, who still every single day at 6 a.m. they do a quick Zoom call to like get up and you know, because of, because of that book. So super cool. Super awesome. My girls and I have a group text. We text uh, it right and say, look, this is what time we're getting up. This is what we're going to work on, blah, blah, blah. And then we text in the morning. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, girl, Corey, thank you so, so much. Does anybody else have any last questions for Corey at all? This was tons of value. I took a ton of notes. And again, it's like, it's stuff that you've probably heard before, but it's such important reminders to hear and things like that if you're not implementing these things in your business then like these are the like on three little recipe cards here i have like the secret to our business and it's just how to how to invite people to join us on this incredible life-changing journey like Corey, literally in six steps laid out for you how to grow your business so I hope that you guys take away from what she has shared tonight. Like I said, I know that, you know, I've already got little tidbits. So I'm like, oh my God, I need to start doing that. So Corey, thank you so, so much for doing this. And to everyone who's on the call, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for coming. I know there's a little bit of a time difference for some of us, but this was absolutely incredible. And Corey, I totally look forward to doing this again in the future yeah. and getting our teams together again, because this was really, really cool and super valuable to do it this way. Yeah. Awesome. I would love to. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. It was fun. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. I hope you all have a great night. You too, girl. All right.